Hello and welcome back to Minecraft 121 Survival. Last time out we started building the innovation center behind us and so far I think it is going pretty well. And today we're going to be doing more of the same. We're going to be starting on the west wing of the innovation center and I've got a design that looks absolutely brilliant. But it's going to require quite a bit of grinding, a lot of materials. So buckle up and let's get this ball rolling. Now the first thing I want to do is just take a look at the area that we're going to be working in and it's going to be on this side over here. But of course as you can see there is still a lot of innovation center that needs to be built all the way around. This is a massive project and we're going to need a lot of rockets to collect all of this material. However our gunpowder reserves is a little bit low so we might need to do an AFK session and then we'll get started. Before we get down to some serious collecting, there's a little bit of admin to take care of and in this box I have 27 stacks of ore. But that's not all over here, we have 4 more stacks giving us a grand total of 31 stacks of ore and that ladies and gents takes care of all the times that I have died. Plus one for just a little bit of good luck. Now yes the ancient debris I only have 62 pieces but it is ancient debris and as such I'm counting that as a stack and we're going to be using that stack today. So the first thing we need to do is smelt down all of this ancient debris into netherite scraps, make some netherite ingots and upgrade our armor. But it also means that I'm going to need to duplicate my netherite upgrade smithing template a few times and for that I'm gonna need diamonds, so let's break down a stack. And there we go, two and a bit stacks of diamonds from that stack of ore that I broke down and that should give us plenty of templates. So let's go make a few duplicates. Now in the past I have learned that it is a good idea to make way more duplicates than you need because uh, yeah if you use your last one you have to go back into the nether find another bastion and get another template which is not fun at all. Now I do know that there's something I'm still missing for this template I can't remember what it is let's just have a quick look and uh, netherrack okay simple enough I've got quite a few stacks of netherrack over here in the corner. I've got two chest, okay now I've got one chest, and one chest for the extras once I get extras cause eventually I'm gonna have tons of the stuff and let's make ourselves some template copies. Firstly let's pop in our diamonds, we'll add the netherrack and of course last in goes our smithing template and then we just duplicate as many as we can with the diamonds that we have. I think I'm gonna make about 16 copies because in total I need 10 if my estimates are correct which gives us about 6 extras and that'll ensure that we don't run out and have to make another trip to the nether to get some more. I'm still also waiting for my ancient debris to finish smelting so that I can transform all of that into netherite ingots and then we will just pop all of that onto our gear and our armor. It's taken a while but we're almost there. Now before I do turn all of my armor into netherite I need to work on my boots a little bit. I just realized that my boots actually have no protection on them whatever. They've got some awesome other enchantments but I want some protection as well and uh, hello good sir. That is not quite what I need. Um, I think I'm just going to grind this off. Let me just check. Yeah that's the one I want to keep and then we'll grind off the new one. All I need on the current ones is of course the protection so let's see what we get this time further falling unbreaking now i don't think we're gonna get what we want here but let's see and we only get feather falling not good enough so let's grind this down once more and now of course the big problem is that i am out of levels and that means another trip to the xp farm get a few more levels and then i'll come back and try again we're back, we've got some levels and it's time to see if we can get some protection 4 on this sucker. So here we go, nah, protection 3. And I just remembered I have a set of boots down here in the chest which has protection 4 on it. There we go, that's the one I'm talking about. So I'm going to put this one in there for a backup. And then I'll use my current boots as well as the protection 4 boots, combine them and we will have some boots worthy of turning into netherite. I still need some depth strider and the like on there, but we can add that later. 
And my ancient debris is finished smelting, so let's make netherite ingots. And I can't remember exactly what the recipe is for netherite ingots. I remember it's gold and uh, ancient debris scraps, but obviously that's not it. Does, do they need to go into a specific order or what am I doing here? Let me just, let me just look it up. It's going to be a lot quicker, a lot easier. Uh, I was being a bit stingy. It's four of each and not two. And that gives us 15 pieces. It's time we've got our netherite, we've got our smithing templates, we have our donor armor and it's time to turn these suckers into something amazing. So let's pop those in there, add our netherite scraps and I think we can start with our boots. And there we go, our first piece of netherite armor. Let's add the helmet, let's do the leggings and finally we're going to do the chest piece. And there we go ladies and gents, we are completely covered in debris. Next up, we need to do our tools. So first up, our fortune pickaxe, our silk touch pickaxe. And then next, I think, let's do the axe. I still need to put mending on this one. Then we'll do our sword, just to give it a bit more bite. And finally, our shovel. Now, of course, I want to make a hoe as well, because hoes are a lot more handy than one might think. And it'll give me the serious dedication achievement. But in the meantime, look at us. Covered, top to toes in netherite armor all of our tools have been turned into netherite as well as well as our sword so we are good to go but before we do go there's one more thing i want to do i've got all this awesome netherite armor but it's still looking a little bit bland i want to use some armor trims give it a bit of pizzazz so let's start with a chest piece and um that doesn't look bad at all that's not bad either but i do like that one a little bit better let's see what else we have we have that I think is a little bit overdone and that just paints a big target on my chest and another big target on my chest I don't think I want a target on my chest so I'm gonna go with the original with the first one I put in and I'm going to add the spire trim for the color I've decided to go with iron just to keep it nice and low-key nothing too flamboyant with our chest piece done it's time to do the rest of our armor starting off with the leggings We'll do the helmet as well. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome. And finally, let's do the boots. Keep it nice and simple. Keep it one color. And yeah, just look at us all kitted out, all dolled up, and we are ready for action, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, I think it's time to get back to building. So let's head out. Let's start gathering some materials. And then it's construction time. The first thing I need to do is, of course, level out the area where I'm planning to be building and as we're going to be building the West Wing, that means it's this area over here. So let's just land, mark out exactly what I need to dig up. And it's not a massive chunk that needs to be dug up. It's not small either, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Once that's done, we can start construction over here. So let's rip up the trees. Let's turn over the ground and let's make ourselves a nice flat surface. So the heavy lifting is completed so the last thing I need to do is just close up this hole here that opened up while I was excavating and then it's on to collecting our first materials. Now we're going to be using a lot of concrete, a lot of glass and of course a lot of copper. One of the features alone requires 11 stacks of copper blocks so it's going to be a long hard grind. In addition to the materials, I'm also going to need a lot of coal to smelt everything down and that means I need to get out there, dig up stacks and stacks of coal because right now I think I am quite short on coal. I'll also be needing some other bits and bobs but we can collect those along the way. But first off, I'll start off collecting all of the copper that I need and it's a lot so it might take me a while. Some quick calculations tell me that 11 stacks of copper blocks require 99 stacks of copper ingots. That means I need to dig up a ton of copper ore. And that's not even everything I need in terms of copper. 
I need to make some copper trapdoors, some copper grating, lightning rods, etc, etc. Which means I'm going to need a lot more than just those 11 stacks of copper blocks. Now usually breaking down a block of copper ore gives you 2 to 5 pieces of raw copper. But I've got Fortune 3 which means I can get up to 20. It's still a lot of copper ore that needs to be mined though. 99 stacks works out to 6300 copper ingots. And working on being very very lucky and actually getting 20 per block. That's going to be 316 pieces of copper ore that I need. So let's get digging. I think we have enough ore. Next thing we need to do is stack it all up and break it all down. See what we can get. So here we go. First step is building ourselves a massive copper tower. And then we'll grab our fortune pickaxe and break it down. So that took about 20 minutes to complete. But ladies and gents, just look at this. No, I'm not talking about one almost full shulker box. If you take a closer look, you'll see that we have not one no, not two, not three, but almost four full shulker boxes of copper ore. And it's time to get to the super smelter, pop it in there and start smelting down all of this ore. And that brings us to our next problem, because as you can see, coal is still an issue. Now, as I mentioned before, it's not only the copper that we need to smelt down. We also need to smelt down stacks and stacks of glass, about two shulker boxes worth of glass. And that means we're going to need tons of coal so it's time to head out for a coal run and see what we can find yes oh yeah yes yes no 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 okay that one's on me that one was pretty stupid i got cocky i ignored the skeleton for way too long and by the time i decided to fight back it was way too late so let me just grab some backup gear and then we can go and fetch all of our fancy stuff. And apparently backup gear was not necessary. The skeletons have disappeared. However, I'm sitting with a full inventory. And uh, let's just get all of our good gear on before we go any further. My chest piece is over there in the corner. Let's just grab that as well. And I think I'm just going to chuck a few of the uh, rubbish things like those. And just go ahead and pick it all up. Why don't I? Anyway, let's just chuck that. We've got our sword, we've got our elytra, and I think we've got all of our armor and gear. So let's get back home and let's get started smelting all of the stuff. But first we need to break down our coal ore. So once again, it's time to pile it all into a big, big tower and then break it all down. Now, this hasn't given me quite as much coal as I'd hoped for, but it has given me quite a few stacks of coal. I really do think this should be enough, so let's pop it into the super smelter and move on to the next thing. That next thing is black stained glass, for which I need a ton of black dye. And that means the poor squids are in for a very, very bad time. I need about a shulker box full of glass and I need quite a bit of black concrete as well, so I'm sorry about this little squids. Next thing I need is some gravel. I think I've got a few stacks. I need more. I'm going to need to make white concrete, black concrete, and a little bit of yellow concrete as well. But the biggest problem is that there are no mountains nearby with large deposits of gravel. I don't want to go underground looking for gravel. So I'm just going around the riverbeds, digging up everything I can find. I've got gravel, I've got sand, I've got some coloring, and it's time to make some concrete. And the first thing I'm going to make is, of course, some white concrete. Fortunately, I've got plenty of bones. I can make plenty of white dye. And I'm going to need just about a shulker box full of this magnificent stuff. However, making the concrete powder is only a half of the battle. I will need to turn most of this concrete powder into actual concrete. And that is the most time consuming part of this job. So there we go. We've got a ton of white concrete. I'll pick up that bone just now. And we have more than a shulker box of the white concrete. Let's just grab our bone, pop it back into its proper place. And then we'll head out and see about turning all of this concrete powder into some concrete. And today I'm going to be trying a new method. What I've done in the past is lay out all of the concrete powder into a big wall and then just doused it with water to turn it into concrete. 
but it's time consuming, it's a little bit dodgy, and I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna stack up white concrete powder all the way to build limit, go down to the bottom where the bottom one is resting in some water, and then just start digging. So let's see if this works better. And to be honest, that worked absolutely beautifully. So I have found my new way of turning concrete powder into concrete, which means we are in for a bit of a grind. Doing it this way means that we turn almost four stacks of concrete powder into concrete every time we go up. And that means we've got quite a few more to go. So let's get busy and let's place down the next row. Here we go, all the way up to the build limit. We're all sorted for white concrete, black concrete, white glass and black glass. Next thing we need is some yellow glass and yellow concrete. And unfortunately, that means collecting a ton of yellow flowers. I don't think there's anything else that I might have that I can use to make yellow dye. And I don't think there's anything that is easy to find. So I just have to run around and collect as many dandelions as I can possibly get my hands on. And this is the biggest load of nonsense that I have ever laid my eyes on. I'm in a flower forest and as you can see, there are no yellow flowers in this forest. Should we need orange dye? There's a ton of it. Should we need red? Yeah, there's plenty. We've even got some lilac and all of the other colors that we can think of. But yellow, no sir, not in the flower forest. And so our search continues. And apparently I've been a total tool. I forgot about sunflowers. One of the only two things you can use to make yellow dye in the game, dandelions and sunflowers. Sunflowers give you two dye per flower and you can actually farm them with bone meal. So I'm gonna grab all of the sunflowers that we have over here and then I'm gonna make all of the dye that I need from that. We've got plenty of bones, which means we've got plenty of bone meal. So let's just grab these few. And with that, I actually think we have more than enough dandelions and sunflowers to make all of the dye that we need. It's been a long, hard grind that took me many, many hours. However, it is done and it's time to start building. And the first thing that we're going to do is level out our building area with some stone right over here. Just make it big enough for us to place our building on top of. And then we can get down to some serious construction work. Ladies and gentlemen, let's build the West Wing. The majority of the construction is completed, however I don't know what they are doing in this west wing, but it is corroding these walls something awful. Just look at that patch over there. But even worse is of course this ball we have up here, the big massive copper ball. Some ooze has actually eaten a hole through it. 
it is dripping down the side of the tower and I'm afraid that it might make its way all the way down and eventually run into the sewer grate over here. And who knows what kind of mutations the ooze might cause to the creatures living in the sewers. Anyway, I've called the company to come and take a look. Hopefully they will arrive soon and start working on repairing all of this nasty, nasty corrosion and damage. But until they arrive, let's just have a quick flyby and look at what we have created. And so far, it is looking absolutely awesome. So the contractors arrived a little bit earlier and they are busy taking care of all of the damage over here in the west wing. As you can see, they've set up their scaffolding. They've got a little platform up top there that they can use to go up and down. And let's hope that they get all of this nasty, nasty stuff sorted out and the walls fixed up as soon as possible. And now that that's done, I'll have to go and have a few words with the scientists working in the West Wing just to try and figure out what the heck they are actually doing over there that's causing all of this damage to the walls. And it appears that I've hired a bit of a sloppy contract here, left out one of the supports for his uh, platform at the top, but we fixed it and now they can't fall down and sue us. Next though, I'm thinking about calling a landscaping company because as you can see, that is all getting sorted out, but the landscape down here is looking a bit terrible. I need somebody who can come and take a look and make this area look pretty. Perhaps add a few plants and maybe a tree or two. And they came, they saw, they conquered and they did absolutely awesome work. Ladies and gentlemen, just take a look at this. The landscaping company were true artists and it made the building look absolutely gorgeous. We've got a little tree on the second terrace. We've got a big tree at the bottom and we've got some bushes all around the entrance. And of course, they said they've got some other ideas and they will come back to finish the work later. I also heard them talk about adding something absolutely phenomenal to the inside, but they can only come back next week. And so far, the Innovation Center is looking absolutely amazing. I am loving this design. It's sort of a mix between futuristic and retro at the same time, kind of like what somebody in the 50s might have thought the 2020s would look like. So there we go. The Innovation Center is off to a flying start and I'm loving where it's going. But that, ladies and gents, is unfortunately all we have time for today. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave a like if you did and if you want to see some more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time, beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye-bye.